In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can import your own 3D assets into Hubs and Spoke. And most of the tutorial is around converting your 3D files into the .glb format, which is the only 3D format that Hubs and Spoke accept. But the easiest way, and it's not that difficult to do, and the easiest way to do this is by actually using Sketchfab, which is already integrated into Hubs. So the first thing you do is go ahead and create a free Sketchfab user account. And once you've done that, you'll be able to upload file sizes up to 50 megabytes, which is more than enough space for doing this kind of file conversion. Now, once you're ready to upload, find, having exported it, of course, um, export your 3D object as either an FBX or an OBJ. Either will, either will work great. In this case, I've got my OBJ files right here. And because they are separate, separated files, um, they're actually just over 100 megabytes. And so what I do is zip them up into an archive, into a .zip archive. And so on Windows, I use 7-zip. On Mac, there are other tools available for doing this. But basically, when you compress your obj files into a .zip compressed folder, um, it will become much smaller. So in this case, it's only about 40 megabytes. So it's always better to have smaller 3D models. Just remember that for hubs, because then it's, it requires less bandwidth to use your hubs room when the 3D models are smaller files. So I'm now ready to upload my 3D files into Sketchfab. And I've already done this, so I'll jump ahead. So after the files have been inspected by Sketchfab, and you quickly then should, everything should go fine, and then you just say continue, and it will upload. Once the upload process has finished, and Sketchfab has processed your model, it's then ready to publish. And what you'll want to do, and this is the way I, I go about it, is change download, the download option to free. And then I, in this case, because I'm really just converting the model, um, I'll change it to private for the link. And this is the heart of why we're doing this and why we're using Sketchfab. <clears throat> and that's because when you <clears throat> excuse me when you upload a model to Sketchfab, it will automatically convert it to two other file formats, and it just does this on the server. So it'll automatically create a GLTF version of your model and a USDZ version. Now we need this. We need this GLTF conversion because the .glb file that we need is a version of this, and so at this point. Our model has been published, we have allowed it to be downloaded, and we can go ahead and copy this link here to our model. Now what you might want to do, and I always recommend doing this, is go ahead and play, hit the play button, and take a look at your 3D model just to make sure that all the 3D assets look the way they should. So there are no surprises once you get the model into hubs. So the textures look good. The mesh looks good. The materials all look as I expected them to. So everything's fine. Now we're just waiting a moment for this conversion to finish. And we know it'll we know when it's done when this will let you download the conversion. So this is still converting obviously. Now, as soon as this is done converting, and while we're waiting, we can go ahead and go into Spoke. And what you can do is go to Elements and then Model. And then you can add a model to a scene. Now, by default, it creates a little rubber duck. <laughs> um, but 
but when you there's the duck okay now with the duck selected when you look at the properties you'll see it's just a sketchfab file so what we're going to do is paste our own sketchfab file into this URL bar here but we should wait for this conversion to finish because hubs needs this converted format of the file okay once you see that the GLTF version has been converted and with the little download button there then you can go ahead and in hubs you can paste the URL to the object that you just uploaded. Ah, now, <laughs> so the model is improperly scaled which is likely going to happen to you as well. So the model is so big that it's, it's, it is gigantic. <laughs> it's huge, it's absolutely huge. And it's at the wrong angle. So you'll have to scale it down significantly, or I'll have to scale this one down. Uh, let's see. So it's enormous. When you're dealing with scaling down a giant model like this, or a model that started enormous, it's sometimes you'll lose it when you're doing this kind of scaling process. So when you identify it in the hierarchy, you can always double click it, and the viewer will automatically jump to the model. So at this point, to bring it down into the scene, it's a bit cumbersome. So basically, I'm just trying to get it into that room. It looks closer. It's underground now. There it is. It's still huge. <laughs> so I have to I can make it even smaller. This is a pretty common problem when you're working with this kind of conversion of of 3D assets. And so once you're happy with the size That's better. You can then rotate it. And do what you will with your model. 